You're listening to Epic Chats with Lee Stephen. To find out how you can be a guest, email lee at epicuniverse.com or tweet at Epic Universe on Twitter. Hello, happy people. Welcome to Epic Chats. I'm your host, Lee Stephen, author of the Epic series that these chats usually invoke to some degree. Uh, it's not always the case, but uh, it's often the case. And today it's definitely the case because we have none other than Stuart Cummings, the voice of Scott Remington, with us in the Dawn of Destiny audiobook recently released. And um, Stuart is one of the two voice actors that have actually got a chance to meet in real life. And yes, it was, I want to say, when we met, we were going to go to a certain restaurant, and the line was so long that yeah. we ended up going across the street. Am I, am I making this up, or is no, that how it – You're not making it up. New Orleans is a crazy, crazy place, and we ended up – yeah, you, you picked a restaurant that is more popular than you thought it was going to be. Yeah, and I want to say we ended up across the street at some, like, Cajun cabana bar. It was, it was, it was a different experience. It was great, though. Oh, it was fantastic. Uh, what stands out to me the most – was that we were going to go and do something, and then my wife got an emergency call to go to the hospital to do something because my wife, being a nurse, and me and you ended up sitting on the tailgate of my truck That's behind the hospital <laughs> just just chatting, yeah. just yakking away. Yeah. And it sounds like it would be a great story for some like awesome I- original idea to have developed. Totally. But, uh, yeah. No uh, – no awesome original idea developed. No, but we, just, we did talk uh, we just, about we did talk about going frogging, which I still want to come and do. Yeah, yeah, you've got to get uh, you've got to get down here to go frogging. I actually got a pirog, which anyone listening who's not from Louisiana is have no idea what that is, but it's basically like a Cajun canoe. It's a pirog, and um, yeah, when you get down, we're going out, we're launching. I'm down we're with the, I'm down with the cause. Snatch some frogs and have a good time. Before I get into the voice acting stuff, I do have to mention. You mentioned New Orleans. You've been everywhere. Is there like a country on earth that you have not visited? Well, I'll tell you, I have not been to Russia. I'd love to hit uh, Australia. Uh, I've never been to South America. No, that's not true. I've been to South America, but not uh, not all the countries, just uh, just touch, touch the continent. Um, but yeah, I love to travel, and, and there's so many places I haven't seen yet, especially in the U.S. There are so many cool places in the U.S. I mean... The, being from Canada, there aren't a lot, of, there is not a lot of, I mean, there's culture here, but it's not the same, you know, we're a young country. And so I used to live in New York. And so when I was in New York, I thought, wow, this is 300 years old. This place is 300 years <laughs> old. Like we haven't got anything in Canada that we do, but it's just, it's not on my end of the country, obviously right. on the West side. So it's uh so yeah, I love to travel. And I think that's one of the things that got me into, into voice acting was imitating other uh, uh, accents, you know, from Scotland to to Indian. I went to India for several months, and you know, I, I love you know getting into the character and 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 you know, kind of connecting with with people in some way. Because whenever I do an accent for people and I I'm able to pull it off properly, the look on their face is just kind of like, <laughs> hey, he, he gets it, you know, or he, yeah, that's, that's awesome, that's great. Do you end up traveling for a lot of the work that you do, or do you work um, I'm kind of skipping ahead here to some questions I wanted to ask later, but do you work out of your home studio or? I, I work out of my home one? studio. I guess I work to travel. I mean, I love traveling. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, with my work with voiceover, most of my clients are around the world. Like this last week, I've got a client from Paris, mm-hmm. Lithuania, Germany, and uh, well, lots of U.S. clients. But this particular, this last week, I have a lot of really foreign um, clients, which is cool. But most of the time, I'm just in my studio. We record, we talk a little bit on Skype, and then I don't see them again until the next session. All right, let's start talking about some of the voice stuff that you've been in. Uh, I can start listing all of your clients, but it's like looking at a Fortune 500 list or like a NASCAR event with all the logos that you have on your website. Go on there, uh, which your website is, it is mailvoiceover.ca. Yes. Correct? Mailvoiceover.ca. Um, you know yes. what? It's been a, the stuff that I've been working on. The most interesting, and I'm not just I'm not just telling you this, but the most interesting has been Donna Destiny. Um, just for the the ability to do a main character, that was my first main character where I was. I mean, I act like I had mentioned before. I'm an actor, 
first and for, first and foremost. But as I've gotten more and more into the voiceover, a lot of the stuff are just com- a lot of commercials and that kind of um, content, which is just not nearly as exciting as um, you know shooting monsters and uh, and aliens and and being involved in battles. I think that's probably the most interesting thing I've done to date. You know, it's it's it was just so rewarding to be able to take your direction, do 10 takes of something, and you said, Stuart, you know, I don't know what to work with you. We've got so much cool things. I, I was always felt so positive after getting off a session with you, you know. It was it was, I mean, it was, it was outstanding working with you. And um, all those takes, uh, for those who, um, who don't know the audiobook or, or audio production process, you always want somebody to give you multiple takes because um, just a, a simple thing like uh, – Yes, sir, could be said in five different ways that have five different meanings. So I always wanted people to give me give me a couple takes so I can merge this with the other actors. And Stuart was an ace with this. I mean, I'd get I'd get seven takes, ten takes. It's like this is awesome. I can find anything to work with, anything that anybody else gives me. But I think the the enthusiasm with which you approached Scott was outstanding. And every time I listen to it, I think the, the ultimate compliment is to say that I forget that you are acting and it sounds like you're really there in the room with everybody else. And I think it was just, it was incredible. I can imagine it'd be quite different from doing a, um, a technical presentation <laughs> voice demo. Yeah, a little bit different. So how often do these dramatic roles come around? I guess, I mean, right now I, I, uh, I'm voicing a character for a Japanese animation and it's uh, called Vanguard and it's been around for a while. We're on our, just finished the fourth season and I was doing a main character for that. And that was, that was, you know, it reminded me a lot of, of my experience with Don Destiny because it was just, there's energy in it. You're, you're playing off of other characters. Um, you really have to be in the role. Um, so I, I play a, a 16 year old who's, it's kind of a card playing game, you know, these card fights, Japanese kind of animations. And it's, um, I, I'd say, you know, once, I, I do quite. A, I booked fifty episodes for them, so it's, it was quite a few wow. episodes to do uh, for a show, and um, so you know, it, was, it definitely gave me some great experience to have in my pot in my back pocket going forward. And and it's been, I'd, I'd say, you know, I do I do quite a bit now, and because of this initial start here with Donna Destiny. Everyone, here's what I want you to do: Sasha, inform Major Tacker of our status and tell him I have assumed command. Yes, sir. Beacon, engage them from right where you are. Donner, you'll do the same from over here. Distract them. Jay, while they're doing that, I want you to break into that building right in front of you and get as high as you can on the other side. Find a window. Get in a comfortable sniping position. Call me when you've done that. Got it. I'm going to mirror you on this end through this building. When we're both in position on the other side, we'll hit them at the same time from opposite directions. Gotcha. Scott drew a deep breath. Let's go. Tell me how you got into this, into voice acting. What was it that made you first realize this is what I want to do? Well, or not? I say voice acting because you voice acted for me, but acting in general because you've done a lot of on-screen stuff. Yeah, the first well. I guess what got me into acting I, is I, you know, I was always I was always loving entertaining people. I love to do improv. Uh, you know, um, I love Saturday Night Live, and so I guess that was kind of the the initial. Uh, interest that I had was just entertaining people, making people laugh. And so I became a little more serious when I went to New York and went to acting school and I went to the Neighborhood Playhouse, which is a very good school in New York and is a Sanford Meisner technique school. And voiceover was always kind of at the, at the back, in the background. And it wasn't until I was in Vancouver, I moved back, that I booked a role on Soldiers of Fortune 3. I was uh, I actually ended up voicing seven characters for that video game. So that was kind of the start. I got an audition to do a couple different reads and then they said, "Well, wait. Can you do this British officer? Could you do this Australian guy?" So we started doing more and and before I knew it, I was, you know, kept getting invited back to to try out for different different spots and and um it's not always super exciting. A lot of the times I'm just doing um, you know, voiceovers for e-learning. But uh yeah, I guess I've kind of never looked back ever since those those first few years in Vancouver. I just continued. It was more reliable than going out to be an actor. And uh, I've continued 
you know, it's, it's like every job, it's got great things and great things and bad things, yeah. and you got to keep working yeah. at it. Would you consider Soldiers of Fortune 3 your first big break so far as for voiceover? Uh, audio, or for voiceover work, specifically for voiceover? Um, you know, my, I would say my, that was a big break, and I, I, I also did the Alan DeGeneres show. I was uh, the, the promo voice for the Alan DeGeneres show, mm-hmm. so I would do the, you know, coming up next on the next Ellen. Uh, so that was, that was a good job. And that was definitely kind of helped me, I guess, up my career in terms of the equipment that I had to get to that particular job. And, right. um, you know, just getting a higher end mic and a higher end, uh, you know, processors and all that kind of stuff, the tech aspects of it. But, you know, that's, that those are the kind of things you had to really consider if you wanted to be serious about it. Um, I do want to, ask you about the tech aspect of it while we're, we're getting there, just because I know some people are always curious as yeah. to how the process works. So I know you work at home from a home studio. What's in it? So I, uh, I built my own studio from Specs Online, actually from a sound engineer. He was doing a little drawing on, on YouTube on how to build the perfect sound studio. And I just followed those specs. It cost me about $250 with the plywood and my own sweat and tears. And I made all the sound barriers that you need to have in, in, in the studio. And then I've got a, a shotgun mic. I use a Sennheiser uh, 416. It's a pretty classic um, mic. The, the beauty of, this, of the shotgun mic is that it allows you to voice and not have to worry too much about the sound around you in the, in the room. So it's very specific. Right. If it's pointing at your mouth, it's not going to pick up the guy mowing the lawn next door. Right. Um, and then I, I, I have, uh, a baby face. Um, it's called a baby face. It's a, a digital converter that goes into, it's a, made by RIM. Great little unit that I just took up to my Mac. I use a, just a Mac laptop. And, and then for sound process, for actual, the processing of the sound waves, I use, um, for editing, I use a, a program called Amadeus, which is a really good Mac based product that's very inexpensive and very user friendly and it's one of my one of my favorite products out there on the market because I can actually ask a question and the developer writes me back which is crazy there are a lot of, of pretty economical ways you can sound really good definitely i think the one thing you know you can, it's it's not about the equipment i mean you can you definitely need something that's going to sound good but i think it's all about practicing a lot I still think the 10,000 rule, 10,000 hour rule applies. If you want to do something great, you've got to put the time into it. And no, um, no doubt about it. And you're yeah, right. Equipment is equipment is is going to be the first thing you buy. It's kind of like setting up your office before you have a business. Sure, it's going to look pretty, but you got to be sitting in it and working at it hard in order for whatever you're going to create to work. And um, you can get some great equipment now. Uh, you know, start off with a a lower end mic and work your way up and figure out what, what, you know, what mic suits your, your voice the best. And I think I tell people, listen, go to a music rental place here. It's long and McQuaid. I'm not sure what the music rental place is in the U S H and B or something. Or anyway, you just go to these places and you can rent four different mics, try them out, yeah. set them up, yell on each one, you know, or, you know, do your thing and, and listen to each one, take it to an expert, even yourself, you'd have a good ear and say, yeah, that mic doesn't suit you quite well. This is yeah. the one to get. And and rental is a great idea. A lot of people overlook that because they think it's a maybe a waste of money, but a lot of the times you can put that money towards the the purchase of a new one at these rental places. You mentioned the the 10,000 hour rule, and that that's kind of a good segue into uh the last big question I have for you. And it has to do with Again, people who are trying to get into this and are interested, what is the advice that you would give someone? Having done, uh, and I, I keep I keep saying voice acting, but just acting across the board yeah. uh, for for as long as you have and being successful in it, what would you tell someone who is maybe not there yet, but working hard to to get to that point? I would say to keep keep showing up, keep getting up in the morning, get a routine. And put the hours in. I mean, I used to have lists of, you know, make a list of the things you want to accomplish short term and long term. I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong with writing your dream on a little piece of paper and putting it in a box. And every so often open that box 
and, and look at those pieces of paper. And, and if some of them are no longer relevant, if you think, well, I, don't, I no longer want to be a red fire engine, then maybe throw that one out. But, you know, yeah. I, I think that for, for people that are getting into the business, I would say practice, practice, practice. You don't need an agent. You can get online. There's a lot of jobs out there um, that require an audition. And so audition and audition and audition. And, yeah, you're going to have to listen to yourself a lot, and you're, you need to learn editing. But these are things that are not insurmountable. It just takes right. dedication and it takes ambition and persistence, and I think with those ingredients, you can really achieve anything you put your mind to. That's what it's about. Yeah. How can people keep up with you, and uh, well, where can people find out more info about you? You can you can you can send me a message at my website at mailvoiceover.ca. You can uh, contact me through Twitter at my handle uh, Stuart Cummings. So that's a pretty easy one. And I think that's kind of the main. You know, I got to be honest. I don't tweet a lot, but I need to do it more. Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to get you tweeting more. Yeah, get me tweeting. Oh, well, I'm yeah, we're going to be tweeting. I, I got to be tweeting out there. All these people are tweeting, tweeting at me, and I, you know, I just don't know what's going on. <laughs> Sir, thank you so much for, for chatting with us. It's always fun uh, when I get a chance to talk to you. Likewise. Well, a pleasure, Lee, and thanks so much for letting me be, be a part of this project. It's been a lot of fun, and uh, looking forward to, to hearing out what else is going to be happening down the line. I'm looking forward to you getting down here and going frogging with me. Can't wait. That's what I'm looking forward to. I can't wait. All right. Thanks so much, Stuart. Thanks so much. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye. Want to be on the show? Send an email to lee at epicuniverse.com or tweet at epicuniverse on Twitter.